Sunday was the 10th anniversary of my mother's death. So this story is for her. And I'm going to start by taking you back in time just a little bit. It's Saturday, May 17th, 2014. And I'm up at the crack of dawn getting our family stuff ready for the annual garage sale. By 8.30, I'm standing out on the boulevard, clipping 50 hats to a clothesline strung between two trees. Now, these were no ordinary hats. You couldn't get them at Macy's or even in Paris because my mom made them. Like this one. You can probably see it's purple. It's got purple and white flowers in the front. And then tucked behind the flowers, there's, um, it's a bundle of sticks. And on top of the sticks is a bird's nest. And in the nest is a bird, but it's a fake bird. No birds were harmed. <laughs> my mom loved to make things. She and my dad started out by making kids. I <laughs> I'm the youngest of seven, and they weren't Catholic. <laughs> but my mom's creative magic infused every day and every season of our lives. For example, in the spring, she made two costumes each for me and my five sisters. That's 12 costumes. And at the end of the uh, dance recital season, those costumes went into a magnificently large box that were our dress-up clothes. Now those boxes came back off the shelf two weeks before Halloween. Now we could be anything we wanted from Cleopatra to a cowgirl or the cow itself. But my mom, she always had on her long black skirt a black cape, a pointed hat, augmented with a long putty nose and a blacked out tooth. She reigned supreme as the neighborhood witch handing out candy next to the bubbling cauldron of dry ice. Every Christmas, she orchestrated the making of dozens of Christmas, these elaborate Scandinavian Christmas cookies. The tree touched the top of our 12-foot ceiling. Every gift was beautifully and uniquely wrapped. It was all magic. And every summer, she threw an elaborate themed party. I especially remember the summer of the Hawaiian luau. She had us kids making the flower lays by stringing clumps of colored tissue paper onto fishing line. After that, we carved the watermelons into outrigger canoes. And of course, my five sisters and I did a cheap imitation we know better now of a, of a hula dance wearing grass skirts and coconut uh, coconuts cut in half for the little bra tops. She spared nothing. <laughs> when my mom's sister got cancer, my mom bought a few cheap hats at Target and decorated them so her sister would have something to wear on her newly bald head. My mom had so much fun making those that she made a few for herself. And then a few turned into a few dozen. After my aunt died, my parents moved to Florida, and all the hats moved too, because my mother never left the house without one. Everywhere she went in town, someone would comment about her hats. She simply became known as the hat lady of Sun City. And over time, of course, her hats morphed. She went from silk ribbons and, and flowers to, um, oh, let's see, uh, bird's nests, uh, butterflies, uh, clay mermaids, you know, it, it sequins, glitter, it, they just got wilder and wilder. And then when my mom was diagnosed with Alzheimer's, we brought her back to Minnesota and we left 150 hats behind in the community room. When she died in December of 2012, the remaining 50 hats went into my basement. So it's May 17th. 2014, and I'm standing in the driveway of the garage sale, thrilled as soccer cleats and skis and sweaters walk away with their new owners. And by two o'clock, as usual, everything's gone, or almost everything, which means I have to face the heartbreak 
that in fact there are still 50 hats <laughs> on the clothesline. I mean, these were my mother's soul. What was I going to do with them? But a white car came up the street, and it got to the trees and slammed on its brakes. And a woman jumps out, rushing towards me breathlessly. Are these hats available? Yeah, yeah they are. How many are there? I said, 50. She goes, oh my god, I'll take them all. You see, my daughter is fighting cancer. And she just lost all of her hair. And last night, we decided to have a crazy hat party. And she tasked me with finding 50 hats. <laughs> Remember, these are true stories. So we tenderly unclip each hat and nest it in garbage bags so as not to break mermaids or crush flowers. And then she says, how much do I owe you? And I answer the only thing I could possibly say. No charge. My mom, wherever she is, is happy beyond measure to give her hats to your daughter for her party. Thank you.